Hi everyone, so a few weeks ago I finished this course, my first course on Code Academy. That was the first time I was uh, doing such an interactive uh, thing. And I really liked it. That, that's my first course, uh, also using the command line. I, I started using the command line six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. Seven weeks ago when I was doing the entrance test for the computer science uh, Alberton School. Yeah, computer science Alberton School. I have no idea to say it. And uh, yeah, I really liked it. And so I, I really, really like this like interactive thing. Uh, so you have, for example, I don't know, uh, configuring the environment, so the lesson. Uh, let me show you. I'm not sponsored or anything. Just, just want to show uh, for people who maybe wouldn't know. And uh, I was using Udemy, and this is day and night for me. I prefer like much more this, completely different, much more efficient. I found. So, for example, you have the indication on the left, so lessons, blah blah blah, indication, and then you know you you, you tap your code on the right, and uh, and. Um, and then the, the, the stuff validated. So here, for example, the, the XQ2. So it's already validated and I have no idea to reset that. I wanted to, to reset it because I wanted to do some, some projects again and, uh, and, and start really from, from the scratch and that my stuff get validated. And, but I don't know how to do that. Uh, so I ask you to type something. So you type it, boom, and then, yeah, the, then the system will recognize that you did it and, and check it. So I really like this. So I have my uh, certification, which is here. Uh, starting March and then I liked it so much and I saw a post of someone in LinkedIn uh, uh, saying oh I've done, I've done learned batch scripting course and I was like oh my god awesome uh, another one so I did it boom and then I found also another one on EDX and this one was my favorite actually it was really cool uh, and yeah I found also another one on Coursera after that but my plan for, for my, my next plan is to do actually the um, computer science basic from Harvard uh, training it takes three months apparently to do so yeah cool thing also is that you can add your certification to your linkedin profile so people can check it and uh, yeah so let's go on with the uh, task now so the, the last project of this course learn the common line lingua franca and offline project right up so here are the tasks you need to download the folder and zip it and then you start so let's go so task one, so my goal is to go through the project and, um, and, 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 and explain as good as I can uh, what I'm doing. So here, the first task is to uh, navigate through the Lingua Franca project. So the first, let's check where we are, where we are. So my Lingua Franca project is in another folder named Lingua Franca project, sorry. And which is also in the folder document. So first we want to go, maybe I should put CD, CD for change directory documents, then Lingua Franca project and then the place where we want to go this one so this syntax signify it means that this folder lingua franca is in this folder which is also contained in this folder which is contained in this folder which is contained in this folder room okay so let's go so we are there then print the working directory when we are there so we check that we are there in the good direction the good target and that's it so task number three is the content of the current directory. So to list the content, we use the uh, command ls for uh, listing or something like this. Then there is a small trick I want to show that I really, really like. When you add the option, so when you put a, a dash like this and, and a letter or number or whatever, it's called an option, right? So here you have the command and then the option. And when you put f, caps f, not small one, is to uh, uh, differentiate folders from uh, files. How? By adding a dash on the right. So you know that this is a folder, this is a folder, 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 and you know that this is uh, a file not only because there is no dash, but also because there is a extension.txt, so th there is no folder that contains a .txt extension. Then task 4, so this is done, task 4 is to create a new directory world in the current directory. So uh, how to create a new directory? Use the command mkdr for make directory and then the, you add the name of the directory you want to create and then it's re, it's created let's uh, use option f to check that it's that is real directory that has been created and not just a file and it's a directory we see the dash on the right then create a new file tax file esperanto.txt in the world directory and list the content of the world directory so how do we create a file we can use touch Command touch. 
And so we want to create something in the world directory. So first we indicate the world directory and the dash and then Esperanto the text and then that will be created. And then we are asked to check the content of the world directory. So how do we do list world? We don't need to put the dash on the right. And then we see that we have our file, esperanto.txt. Task C, list all the content of the current working directory. So we know we're gonna use ls. Based on the following constraints. So content must include hidden files and directories. So that means that we have three lines here. So that means that we will have to use three options. So first we put the dash and then let's go one by one. Content must include hidden files and directory. So we, in, we need to use the A option. Content must appear in long format. So we need to use the L letter for long format. Content must be sorted based on time they were last modified. So we're gonna add the option T for time. And then that's gonna display it like this. And we see that on top of it, we have world, which is the last directory that we created. We have the date today, 22, 6.06 p.m., 6.06 p.m., 6.05 p.m. And you can see that the uh, lowest part, I mean, you see that the date are decreasing. That's it. I was uh, searching for the world. So which directory would appear first? World. Okay, so if we want to make sure or oh, have a clear error. Uh, uh, display of the directories and files and so on, you know, we had the dash F. So we ca you can see that we, when we add options together, uh, you, you can have like different options that are separated and, and uh, I'm going too much into explanation, but in, th in this kind of situation, you know, uh, we just put the options together. Task seven is the content of the Europe directory. So we need to clear to uh, do this because we know that the euro directory is here so if we want to display the content we're just gonna do this and then they say notice that the five Chinese text doesn't belong here of course Chinese uh, is very barely spoken this, this is a ling language a project very barely spoken in Europe this is not one of the main language it shouldn't be here I mean that's that's the goal of the course of the project so we see Chinese here so we're gonna move it obviously we want to move it into Asia right so the Chinese folder is in the... Uh, um. So we need to move the file. So we're gonna use the command MV for moves. Then we target the file. We know that the file is in the folder Europe and the file is called Chinese.txt. So first we uh, indicate what we wanna do, then on what we wanna do it when we use this command. And then we indicate where we wanna put it. So we wanna put it in Asia, poof. Now let's check that it's in Asia, it's in Asia, and let's check that it's not anymore in Europe. It's not anymore in Europe. So task eight, list the current working directory. Boom, and notice that the five Spanish text needs to be categorized somewhere. Yeah, sure, Spanish should be in Europe, in South America, and in North America also. Um, copy it to the following directories, Europe, North America, South America, then remove it. So as you can see here, they give you some hint. So they, they put it very, very small. So what I was doing when I was uh, doing the, the, the stuff, um, the project, the test, I was always looking here. And, and then if I really didn't find an answer, I was going here. So I didn't look for any hint except for the task 14 and the task 16. So we're gonna go there after. But as you can see here, the CP command, you can copy multiple files because if I want to copy a file, I'm gonna use copy files, I want to use the command cp and you can uh, copy multiple uh, multiple files to a single directory but not a single file to multiple directory. So let's do it separately. So first we want to target the file spanish.txt and we want to move it to Europe and we do that like this. Then we check that it's in Europe, it's in Europe. Okay so now let's repeat the command uh, spanish.txt and want to move it to North America, right? So North America, poof. And then this one, we need to move it to North, uh, to South America. Uh, we need to copy it and then we need to remove it. So here, I want to be fast, ideally, and I want to show more stuff and not just, just stick to the plan. Uh, so 
If I need to copy it and then remove it, I prefer to move it directly by using the command MV. The command MV move it, like you will move your car from one parking place to another one. It's not anymore in the first place, right? So this is why it's called moving and not copying. Uh, yeah. So I will take Spanish.text and move it to South America. Poof. So now we check that it's moved, so it shouldn't be here anymore and it's not here anymore. Let's check if it's in a South America folder. It should be, it's there. Okay, good. So directory called to do, yeah. Contains subdirectories and continents. So subdirectories, yes. Mm -hmm. Continents with language file in them is the content of the directory to do. So they ask us to display it like this. Because we could display it like this, but they ask us to display it like this. And what is it gonna do? It's gonna indicate us the content of each of these folders because these are folders. How do I know these are folders? Because if you do this, you can see it, right? So they ask us to display it like this. And look, poof. Well, first, our folder Africa contain in to-do that contain the text file text here, the folder Asia in to-do that contains two file text and the, uh, uh, the same for Europe, right? So done, task 10, please copy these files to the appropriate location under the current top level directory. So what does it mean? That means that we need to a uh, top level directory compared to those folders is the folder that we are in Lingua Franca. Why? because we have all these categories. Uh, as you can see here, we have an African uh, uh, language text in category uh, in the folder Africa, in the folder to do, and we need to move it to the general folder, let's say. So how are we gonna do that? I'm gonna target the, fo I, I know that my folder, my file is in the folder to do, which is in the folder Africa. And now I could type this, the text, right, to copy it, or oh, I could do, that was not plan. I could do this, if I put an asterisk, I can't remember how you call that, markdown, I think, I'm not so sure. Uh, so if I do this, I will select all the files and fol folders that are in the folder Africa, okay, so you will see. And then I want to copy that into the folder Africa, which is in the current directory. Let's check if we have copy it over there. Yes, we have it, African. Um, then we want to do the same to do. We want to uh, select both those files in Asia. So first let's check, let's verify that they are not already. So, I mean, you will see that it works, this, um, Markdown works. So in the Asia folder, we don't have Bengali and Punjabi, right? Here you don't see Bengali and Punjabi, okay. So now we're gonna take all the files contained in Asia and we're gonna put them in Asia. Now let's display again Asia and we see Bengali and Punjabi that we didn't see before, right? Okay, so let's move on. Please copy this file, so it's done. And then remove all those files. Oh, okay, remove all the files and directories of to-do, excluding the to-do directory. So how I'm gonna uh, do that, I'm gonna use the command remove. RM stands for remove. And then I will add the option R, uh, because using the option R, if I don't use the option R, if I do like this, I will not be able to delete all the folders, to delete any folder, you can see there are some errors that are displayed and tell me this is a directory, hmm, so it's not deleted. Let's check, not deleted. So how do I do, so do I delete directories, use the command R, and then I will target the uh, folder to do, but then I indicate that I want to remove everything that is inside to do, not to do itself. Okay, so everything that is inside to do. Ask me confirmation, yes, boom. Okay, now let's check, boom, gone. So, uh, task 12, list all the files in the Azure directory and save it in a file. So how do we list all the files? 
the Azure directory, we do it like this, right? And then if we want to uh, uh, save that into a file, we'll use a redirection uh, command. And the redirection command that we're going to use is... So basically, they ask us to... I mean, not basically, they ask us to all this output here, that what you see here, to put this, this content in a text file, which is going to be in the to-do directory. So I will um, redirect the content, the standard output, we call that, this is the standard output of this command. And this standard output, we will convert it into standard input that we will then inject into the uh, Asian files text, which is in the to-do directory. Asian language files text. Okay, now let's display the file using cat. You can use the command cat or less, L-E-S-S. -S. I will show you. Up, cat, and we see that up the uh, uh, standard output. This one has been converted into standard input and injected into this file. So we can also display the Asian language file text using the less command. But I don't use the less command because it's going to open a new page. How do I go out of this page? So even if I go up and down, you can see I'm going up and down right now, scrolling, doesn't change anything. So, okay. Why are we... So this is done. Instead of writing the content of a file with file editor, I call the following statement. So that, welcome to the in the file African text in the African directory, in the African directory. So you don't need to uh, use a text editor. We are just gonna echo, so using the command echo, and we're gonna echo like, yeah, we can echo <laughs> uh, uh, the content. We're gonna redirect this content so that when 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 you use the command echo, uh, uh, this is what happens, right? It happens in the terminal. So this is a standard output of the command echo. I mean, of this whole command here. And we want to redirect that to put this content into a, te in a, a text. So we are going to transform the standard output into standard input into a file that is in the uh, uh, frequency text folder. So actu actually, I'm not so sure that this file is empty. So just to be sure, so if I, if I use this command, this uh, uh, superior to sign here. If there is some content in this file, it's gonna be completely erased and replaced by this content. So I'm not so sure that this uh, uh, um, uh, file is empty. It is actually because I did the test already uh, three times. But when I'm not sure, I prefer to use this command. When you put double sign, it's gonna add this content at the end of the actual content that could be in this file. If there is some actual content, it will be added after. So I do like this, and then I check the content of the file, again using the cat command, because it doesn't display in your window, and you can see that in the file we have this, so it worked. Then this, this, this is the one that task 14, I had to, to look for a solution because I didn't find it by myself. Now it seems like pretty uh, intuitive and easy, but at the time it was not. So some of the files in our project, which end with the suffix like test, have no content in them, is a file uh, that, I text, that have no content and save the listing in a file. So first, that means that this standard output will be turned into standard input, etc. We'll need to use different commands. Um, I will show you something about that later. So first we need to list the files across all the continent directory. So that means uh, we need to list the files that every file we need to uh, find or act 
on every file that ends with .txt, so every text file that we have in our current directory. Uh, but we know that we don't have any, we remove the only one that we had, Spanish text, we move it and erase it. So we need to move every text file. The, 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 uh, we need to, to, to find every text file that has no content. So no line, no character, no words, nothing. And then turn this standard output into a standard input and put it in a file text like we just did two times. So how are we gonna do that? So first we need to uh, uh, um, go through every text file, every empty text file. So we need to count the number of lines that are in every text file that we have and if our text files are, are empty they will have no lines in it just just the name of the file but that's it no contents so or no line no character no words no lines at all if there is one character there is a line if there is a word there is a line so we prefer to look for lines uh, we could do it we could use uh, anything else so we will use the um, command wc that stands for word count and we will use the option L so that we'll count all the lines of every file in our current directory. And all is children files, I mean all the files in, the, in, the, in our current directory and, and child directories that end with dot text. So I, I put the asterisk before, that means that it will take in account only this it will look only for the files that contain at the end the text if i put for example uh, something opo and then the asterisk it will look for every file that start with opo okay so i want every file that ends with dot text and we see that this file for example contains no lines so no word this file contains one line so it's not empty mm. so what are we gonna do now we're gonna use a grep command so the grep command so here what do i do uh, le let me explain you uh, something so uh, if i want to find in this list if i want the terminal to find to identify which files are empty I need to find the files which have zero lines, zero lines. So I need, so what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna use a command that is called grep. And, and this command, I will ask it to grab, or to, to take only into account, each of the line, it's gonna analyze line by line okay and i will ask it to grab only the line that contains a zero so if there is a line like here which contains no zero it's not gonna take it and this is what we want we want to find the files that are empty so for this i need to use the command that we used before right and i will transfer its uh, um, uh, effect or result it's standard output I will pipe it the, the symbol that you see here it's called the pipe so I will pipe it I will transfer uh, the, 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 the output of this command to another command so that means that the, the command that is here grab zero will automatically so first this one will be executed okay and then, but the, the, the result will not be displayed. That's why we have the pipe. We create a chain, like blockchain. We create a chain of command. So this one is executed, but the result is not displayed. And this one that follows will take into account the, 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 the output of this one. And look, if I click enter, I should have only files that have the number zero, right? So this is what we want. Poof, look, it works. So now we have done it. We have found every file that has zero content in it and we want to put that in a text. So we're gonna do what? Redirect that. And we know that this file, I mean, I know it because I didn't do it, has not been created. And we know that this file needs to be in the uh, to-do directory, same stuff. 
and empty files the text up and now let's check the content of the empty files the text and we should have this right that appears poof this is what we have so it worked and this caused me uh, quite a lot of research i can't remember how long it took me to find it but uh, i was trying first to find it by myself and then i head over uh, yeah google displays the content of uh, so this is what we did this one also broke my head uh, not broke my head but i mean um, caused me more effort than the other the name of our translation service is in front row we also all the files mistaken display it as in front row uh, so with a slash here uh, we don't want the slash here. Replace the string in a front row with in a front row in our occurrence. Uh, uh, check your work using this command. Uh, so, first, uh, we're gonna use this command grip. And, but I'm not gonna use the L option. So, we use it with an R option. That The, the R option will uh, 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 make the command uh, effective on every uh, directory and subdirectory, so children directory, and, and display the content by lines. Uh, I just removed the L option. I will explain you why after. So first, we're gonna check how many files have Lingua Franca written like this, so then you can see it from the beginning to the end. So you see that it, it's displayed like this, it's displayed here. So if I used the L option, why don't I want to use it? Because I wouldn't have been able to see the line displayed containing the words I'm looking for. Okay, so if we want to remove something we need to use the command said then we know a said stands for uh, stream editing and we add the option i which stands for incentive insensitive i don't know how to say it in english which means that doesn't matter if you put uh, for example uh, something with uh, caps you know like this uh, it will look for the letters, not if the letters are in uppercase or uh, lowercase. It doesn't care if you put the I option. So this is what we want, because at the end we want to replace, uh, you know, we want to remove this dash. Tricky thing is that, I will show you something. Um, so normally on Linux you do it like this. So you put S at the beginning, you say, okay, I want to replace this. By this yes you can put space and then if you put it like this it will display what we just saw here without the dash here but it will not remove the content of the original file that will just be what is displayed on the terminal that is going to change nothing else so how do we do normally on Linux or bash we need to use G for global, which will tell him, okay, not only you replace it on the uh, standard output, but you also replace it in the original files. And then we want to target every file that end with text. But using Mac, uh, the, the latest Mac actually, you can't, it doesn't work. So I need to use some like trick that I found on Stack Overflow here. You need to use this. So this command, when you add these two dash and the E, uh, normally you need to use this option E. So you, you don't put them together, right? They're separated by this. So you need to use the E command to add the E command uh, uh, to create a backup. But if you put those two dash here, it will create no backup. But the thing is that <laughs> it's gonna create a backup actually. So. I will use this E and now you will see it's gonna work. It works. Okay, so now let's check. And for example, we know that this one contains uh, uh, lingua franca, so let's check the content of this file. Uh, so I'm gonna use the command cat actually, not ls. Okay, it has been changed. 
look goes like this change but the thing is that I created when I use this E option and this here I created backup files look you see Arabic Arabic text E these are backup files okay so I don't want those files I don't want to have double files but I will delete them I will delete them but, them, but after first let's take care of Shido. let's take care of everything else okay so we need to uh, replace replace uh, in all the text files okay then they tell us use this command to check that to check every file that we have that end by text that contain this and count the number of lines so that means that if there is a file that contains this it will contain at least one line and this command will check this command with the piping system and tell us if there is something or not and zero so it's completely removed but like i said we have those backup files and we want to remove them so we're gonna do i'm gonna use the rm for remove and i'm gonna target every file that ends by text e done now i check asia the backup files are not here anymore let's check asia arabic text to see if the backup file has been removed and not the original one and the backup file has been removed um, yeah not the original one and we have the changes effective okay all good let's check um oh yeah they give the indication here uh, yeah okay create and open the bash profile with your favorite editor so that means that we're gonna use nano because this is what we use during the course and uh, the, the uh, bash profile is located in the root folder so I indicate the, uh, the, the home folder sorry I indicate uh, uh, the home folder location of this the root let's remember um, I have a hole let's check uh, yes that's the home folder okay And then the bash profile to access it with the text editor we do like this. So there is a dot before because this is a hidden file. Okay, you can see here. Uh, oh, this is a wrong file that I created actually earlier when doing the, the course. Again, I need to remove it. Uh, yeah. Hop. So this is the text editor. Uh, and then the bash profile add a greeting of your choice. So how do we write a greeting? We use the command echo and we say hey there, boom, that's it. So what we're gonna, what what is it, what it is gonna do? Once we activate it, it's gonna display this message in the terminal. So how do I exit Fa uh, as fast as possible of the um, um, text editor? I use Control O. Then it asks me, do you want to save your data to? So you have the the. Um, uh, absolute pass of our profile our bash profile which is here and I click here enter and then I click CTRL X and I exit then source the bash profile to make the greeting available how do I source the bash profile I use source and then exactly the same of course absolute pass help oh, hey there it works Okay, to open the bash profile, open the bash profile and create three aliases. So we're gonna use the same stuff and create three aliases md for the clear command, d for date, actually for history. So when you use a date, for example, let's not create a folder, the command date it displays the date. When you use history, it displays you the history of your commands. Um, so we want to use different commands in order to do the same thing instead of typing date I want to type just D and get the date instead of typing history in the command line I just type HY and I get 
the history of my command. So how do we, we do that? We use alias. So we're gonna start our um, alias by alias and say that we want to associate to replace mkdir by md. So I say I wanna I want that md the value of md is equal to actually the value of mkdir. Oh. So you see that you don't put any space, okay? When you do that, lsd equal date, alias hy equal history. I think this video is gonna be much longer than I thought. And now earlier we type date for date and now we just type, oh, first I need to activate it. Save the bash profile, exit Lano, clear the terminal window, okay. And you forgot something. Clear the terminal window using the clear command. So the content is still here, but I just, uh, yeah, remove it from the actual screen. So how do I activate my bash profile using source, right? Okay. So now if I type D, I should have the date. Oh, it works. If I type HY, I should have the history. And if I type MD, so test out the aliases. Now we are at the task 22 already actually after say, uh, test out. Okay. So I'm gonna test the alias MD and say, uh, I don't know, I wanna create this. Directory that is called like this. Let's check if it has been created. Okay, it has been created, so everything works. Now I want to remove actually the um, file I've created, folder I've created, and I removed it. It's gone. So test out. Uh -huh, it's done. Open the bash profile. So nano bash profile. And uh, 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 create and export ps1 vermin variable that means that ps1 i'm gonna change this symbol okay so instead of this i can put not anything i want but i can put a, a ton of stuff i can put a unicorn i can put a euro sign let's put euro sign because i'm french and uh, yeah let's put euro sign so i'm gonna use nano and then i'm gonna use export not alias and ps1 and make it equal to the euro sign then i save exit i source and then you can see euro instead of the percent right it works oh yeah so actually i replaced all that stuff not just the thousand sign uh, ta -da -ta -da. Then I save the profile. Oh, I forgot to clear the terminal window. Blah, blah, blah. So, okay, I clear. Source the bash profile to make a new prompt. We did it. Test out the prompt. We did it. D for date, H3 for history. And create a file. Folder. Okay, folder has been created. Delete it. Up. And how, do, how did I do that? I select, I double click here, I select, then I, I use copy paste, and yeah, that's it, copy paste. And paste it, test out the prompt, last button suite, return a list of environment variables. So this is the stuff that broke my head a little bit, but uh, to, to understand the concept. So these are um, uh, uh, all the variables that are uh, located, uh, activated actually right now. And you need to use the command V. So this is all. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. And oh wow, that's much longer than expected. Okay, cheers.